Welcome back. Now, songs of the late reggae legend Lucky Dube continue to get airtime 15 years after his death. Dube was hijacked and shot dead on the 18th of October in 2007 in Johannesburg in the suburb of Rosettenville, shortly after dropping off his two children at their uncle's house. Former backing vocalist Pumi Maduna and a former band member Tutugani Tele joins us now in studio. Thank you so much for joining us and being with us tonight as we celebrate 15 years, or rather commemorate 15 years since the passing of Lucky Dube. But Tutugani, I'd like to start with you. We know that he was South Africa's highest selling reggae artist. I mean, he yes. introduced basically to many of us the music of reggae while we were growing up, but he also was one to be known as a freedom fighter. He was involved in many other bands before the Lucky Dube band was, was formed. He sang Bakang at some point in yes, his life. Yes, of course. Can you just give us a little bit on the history of how the Lucky Dube band was formed? Yeah, uh, Lucky Dube, we used to, uh, we used to sing Bakang music before, and... Uh, I understand even before uh, I joined the band, he was, uh, a, he was in the, uh, a, a, rock, a rock band. Right. Yes, he liked rock so much that he formed a, a rock band in Standerton, but he didn't, he, he didn't succeed like uh, he wanted. Right. So he moved to Newcastle. He was discovered by... Uh, uh, he, uh, his cousin Richard Siluma. So he joined uh, uh, the band of Love Brothers in, in Newcastle, where uh, Richard Siluma were based so with Love Brothers. So then they made uh, his albums uh, separately from Love Brothers. That's when I joined in 1982. So and after that, it was Mpakanga and a little bit of reggae and uh, African music, which, is, which was called uh, Kapse Dance. Right. Yeah, it was, it was famous also. So. And then somehow, when we went to Lesotho, we were singing uh, um, Bakanga. And then one, one of the audience said, Batubamona, give us soto. <laughs> they didn't uh, understand. They didn't music. understand uh, Zulu. Right. So we decided then that, that let's just play a reggae since we sing it in in English. Right. So since from then, why why? And it was such a universal language that, I mean, it spread throughout the continent of Africa, and that's where he continues to be remembered. But this, for me, being a part of, of this musical genius, you were a backing vocalist at the time. Yeah. We know in 1984, this is when the reggae band really took on. Just take us through some of the highlights that you were a backing vocalist, especially during a time of, of the heightening of apartheid. Apartheid, yes. Um, Mostly with me, I think it's a different case altogether because firstly, I would like to, as, as, as you know, I think even as people know, <coughs> I am cheek to cheek. I was cheek to cheek for the 80s disco music. Right. Now, the weird thing is that Lucky Dube was my biggest fan when I was still cheek to cheek. Oh, okay. He loved my music so much and I didn't know, right? So when we split with Tick to Tick, there was time that we split. So he asked uh, some of the band members, I think he asked Jabus Mumbe to go and get me at home. That hey, man, I need that woman. I need her to join us, you know, in the band. I know he doesn't do reggae, but man, I, I just love her voice. Can she come and join us and be my backup singer? Do you think she will agree? So, yeah, uh, I was like, man, reggae, lucky, are you serious? So when I got there, he was so excited to see me. I was so excited to see him because <laughs> then, at that time, I was his biggest fan. You were his biggest fan. Then. Yes, yes, <laughs> I used to listen to his songs, and I didn't even think that one day he would just uh, send Jabu to come and fetch me. You know, so that's why I'm saying with me, it was a different angle altogether. But hey, when I got there, it was like I was, 
I started singing reggae many years. It was like, you know, I, I was just wearing reggae, you know. Funnily, so that's why they say, you know, if you are a musician, any genre, music is music. Music is a universal you know, language, is right? It's a, a universal language. So, yeah, that's when I joined him, and I was happy. I felt at home, but to Tugani, you know, even him, he was my biggest fan. <laughs> yes, I mean, me, me, and, me and Laku used to, to listen to Pumi's music when, when she was cheek to cheek. Yeah. There was a song, my love. My life is in danger and I need it for my son. Lucky used to love that one. And then we, we used to watch TV until the song finishes. We didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. we watch. No interruptions yeah. whatsoever. So yeah. I got a warm welcome, you know. I got a warm, a warm welcome. All, <clears throat> all I can say as Pumi, you know, I'm happy that uh, he inspired me into this reggae genre because I, I didn't know reggae. I did, you know. So when I started uh, recording this reggae music as, as Pumi now, it was, it was time when we, we, we came from uh, th that, that three months, no, the three months tour, no, in, in Japan I was already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was already you, doing reggae. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so when we, uh, from that USA tour, yes, uh, yeah. when we came back, he said, him and Richard Sloma, then, then it was his, his, his manager then. He came back and they said, you see, you see now, you see now you hit reggae like, because I just, I had to adjust and adapt to this reggae. To so this genre. reggae music, yes. most certainly. But still on that, I mean, the reggae, the reggae music was used to convey a message of, of social, politically inclined kind of messaging. Yes. How important was that for, for all of you guys as a band, and most especially for Lucky like Dube, to use that platform in addressing the social ills of the time? Yeah, because we, we sang reggae in a, during the, the apartheid time. And that time, it was very hard for reggae. It was not played on the radio. And before it, they play a song, they, they have to check the lyrics. There was some censors, people who listen, if... It's not going to influence people in anyhow into riots or anything because reggae is known as uh, uh, the voice of the voiceless. Right. So we, we used to be careful how we place our, our lyrics so that even if we want to say we are slaves in South Africa, we had to say we are liquor slaves just to, 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 to dodge the, the people, exactly. they are the, to dodge the people who will never allow the reggae music to be played on, uh, or on, on the radio, because since it was not played, so the reggae music was not famous. So we had to go around and perform, maybe for ten people, but we didn't give up, we didn't quit, because uh, the, the 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 word that needs to go to people is to people must have freedom. You know, we used to sing freedom, freedom everywhere. So reggae music, it was a, a serious tool to, to free the people out there. Even the people in exile, they used to listen to our music because we had songs fight, like, fight, yes, right. they, 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 House they of went so, House of Exile, we are like slaves, that. we are prisoners. And those are songs that really got people going. The issue today is that the rest of the continent, I mean, even countries as far as New Zealand, mm. are celebrating Lucky Dube. Mm. What's your feel in, in how South Africa has really not taken up the step in celebrating him as much as many other countries such as Zimbabwe and Zambia and, like I mentioned, New Zealand? Yes, it's a pity that uh, South Africa has gone back to those times of apartheid whereby uh, reggae music is not celebrated or, or played music is or, or it, it is like shadowed so much that mm. you you can hardly hear reggae music on the radio so that is why we uh, as reggae musicians we still suffer the same uh, way that we suffered during the apartheid because when lucky dube is born on the 4th of august there's no celebration and when he passed away, there's no tribute to Lucky Dube. Mm. And uh, as an icon that was uh, recognized, all four corners of the world. Mm. We went to, to, to Jamaica where reggae 
uh, is claimed to be uh, where it was is rooted. We conquered the first time we went there. We conquered in such a way that they asked for anchor. Mm. They didn't want they us to yes, get off uh, the stage. In the, <laughs> they, they said uh, it, the last time it was an anchor in Jamaica, it was during the time of Pope Mali. And now we were, we were all over. We had to come back again mm. because South African flag was up high. Mm. Because, was, because of us, we'd like to do that. Now, Lucky Dube is not celebrated. We feel like, uh, I don't know, we, uh, we, we are not uh, celebrated with our own people. All over Africa, yes. All over America, all over New Zealand, everywhere in the islands, yes. But here, no. we like, no please, we want, we, want, we, want, we want people to... To, to, to worship or to highlight our heroes. He certainly was a hero. Thank you so much for joining us this evening in celebrating and commemorating Lucky Dube on this 15th um, anniversary. And I certainly hope that with the work that you're doing, we're able to inspire more young people to use the music and the voice of reggae yeah. in conveying more issues yes, around the world. Yes, Thank you so much. carrying on with the legacy. We have you certainly it. need to. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for joining us. We have to leave Thank it there. That Thank was so Lucky Dewey's former backing vocalist, Pumi Maduna, and former band member, Tutu Nanipele, telling us there about their experiences with the legend.